Okay. <laughs> All right. So, hi everybody. Hi. Um, I am. Uh, my name's Erin. I think I've met uh, many of you when we were here before testing some of our apps. But um, pleasure to be here. Thank you guys so much for taking out. I know it's really hard to find a whole day to take out to do training, and so I'm really appreciative that you guys can be here. And I hope that we'll keep this fun and interesting. And um, um, I hope that. We'll learn from you as well as you learning from us. Um, so uh, we're going to talk about this person-driven outcomes project today. Um, uh, the one thing I want to start with is just to thank um, our funders for this project are the John A. Hartford Foundation and the SCAN Foundation. Um, so I'd like to start by thanking them. And then how do I? Yeah, I... can you see? Let's see if that's a slideshow yep. from start. Okay. Oh, yeah. Lovely. Ah, there we go. <laughs> Stand in the Hartford Foundation. Okay, so what are we going to do today? Well, we'll start with a little icebreaker just so we can get to know each other. Um, I'm going to provide some kind of high level overview of what this project is about and what kind of the research is that we're doing here. Um, we're going to talk about the. Um, uh, Actually, before I get to that, we're going to hand out everyone's iPads um, that we'll be using for data collection in this project and making sure what is usually the most challenging part of the day is logging into your iPad and logging into the, um, the, the actual app that we're using. So we'll get that all set up. Then Shauna is going to talk a little bit about um, setting goals and some of the tools we have around setting goals. How do you work with individuals to set goals? I'll talk about um, person-reported outcomes, um, or PROMs, um, and how we use them in this um, particular program. We'll have lunch, we'll come back and we'll talk about a different method, which you may not be familiar with, called goal attainment scaling. Um, and then we'll finish up the day by talking about some logistic things, including informed consent um, and troubleshooting when, um, how, what resources we have to help support you in that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so to get us started, um, what I would like everyone to do is just take a minute and think about a goal that you have set for yourself and accomplished, and then we're just going to go around the room and talk about, just introduce yourself, what your role is, what organization you're with, and what that goal was, and think about the goal that you set that it, and you achieved what was successful about it and what was challenging about it. So I'll give people a couple minutes to think about their goals. And these don't have to be like big life goals. They can be, you know, just any goal. So uh, I want to just point out a few things that I kind of, I think this, we try to do this exercise to get people started thinking about goals and to hear other people's goals so you can hear some of the common themes that we hear in goals. And so one of the things that we see, especially when people talk about goals they were successful in, is they can normally point to something specific that they accomplished or did to say that I met that goal because something specific happened. Um, so that's one of the things we're going to be trying to work on here is when we set goals with people trying to think about how will we know when that goal is achieved? What things can we point to to say that's achieved? Um, the other thing, and I think we heard this a few times here, is that sometimes you're setting goals for others, um, if, especially if you're a caregiver. So we talked about parents here, but it can work the opposite way if you're a caregiver for for a parent or for a spouse, you may want to set goals for others. Um, sometimes not all goals are successful at first, and that doesn't mean it was a bad goal or there was a failure. It means you had to reevaluate what the goal was or how you were going to achieve the goal, and that's that's part of the process. Um, giving yourself an out, I think Carolyn, you mentioned that, of being able to say, how are we going to know if this, we got to figure out a way to make the goal something that is actually you want to achieve and that if you are not, you know, if you're not feeling engaged in that goal, you're probably not going to achieve that goal. Mm -hmm. um, and making it small. Sometimes you have to take a goal and make it into smaller pieces in order to get to a bigger or larger goal. So those are all kind of themes we'll be talking about today in terms of how goals work for patients and caregivers. Okay, you should see an app that is purple that says NCQA. You're going to click that app. And it should bring you to a screen that looks like this, mm -hmm. where it says email and password. 
<laughs> okay, so if you are successful at logging in, you're going to have to just hit agree. I'm not sure I agree. Okay, well, you can take your time to be no, all in kidding. favor of informed <laughs> consent. Okay, so these, this is the app where you will be entering all the data collected from this um, study um, so that everything you know, you can enter directly into here. We'll talk a little bit about if you are a person who really prefers to use paper um, with people. Um, there are some options for some pieces of this that you can use paper, and then you can enter it later if you want to. But we tried to do this because what, one of when we piloted this before, we were all paper-based, and the double data entry of going from paper back into the system was just too much for people. So we tried to make this as user-friendly as possible. I think some of you have already seen this, actually. So, um, uh, But we'll be walking through this, and we'll be using this in our um, all of our role plays today. And then I'll talk to you a little bit at the end of the day. All the data that's in here then goes into server in the sky, cloud, <laughs> something, and um, it's available then on a web portal where you can access all of the data, and you can access that website from any computer. Um, so if you want to be using this to capture data when you're working with people, and then later copy and paste it into your own notes, we're going to show you how to do all of that. Okay? All right. Any questions so far? All right, so we've done our first activity. We've unlocked the iPad. We've logged into the app. Um, don't worry about the web portal quite yet. All right. So let me talk to you now that we've got that all running. These are all set so that they're probably going to turn off. Um, they'll turn off automatically. Don't worry about it. We'll let you know when we need them again. We just wanted to make sure everyone got that and was ready. <coughs> okay. So why are we here today? Um, so NCQA, as I explained, is, as an organization, a lot of the research that we do um, is about how do we evaluate the quality of healthcare. Um, and the way we've typically evaluated quality is we develop these quality measures that are based off of clinical guidelines. And we usually say, this is something that should happen for everybody, or this is something that everybody should achieve because this is what good health is. Um, and we apply the same measure across the entire population. We pick a population and we say, everyone should achieve this. Um, so if you think of something like, everybody should have a hemoglobin A1C under 9. You know, that's the, what science says is good, so we're going to see if everybody has that. The problem with this approach is that it works generally okay in a typical healthy adult population. It starts to break down when you start to get more and more complex populations. And so especially, this is not news to any of you, but as you go into the, a, a more frail elderly adult population, um, that quality measurement doesn't mean the same thing anymore. Um, of good quality care is not always the same thing. And this uh, approach of using one measure to assess what's good quality of care across an entire population that's incredibly complex, it doesn't work anymore. Everybody is defining good quality in a slightly different way because they have different needs. So we started out a lot of this research by actually going out and doing focus groups with older adults. Um, and we were looking specifically at older adults who had at least one ADL limitation. Mm -hmm. And we asked them, what's most important to you? What matters most about your health care? And what we heard was that there's a huge variety, and this is not really surprising, but very few people say hemoglobin A1C under 9. Um, and, but they also express a huge variety of things. They don't talk about just one or two things that are really important to them. They express a whole variety of goals. And they can be classified into different kind of categories. Um, so we've got goals that are about health and quality of life that may be some of the typical things we measure in healthcare, like managing symptoms, lose weight, increase mobility. But then we have goals around values of things that are important to people. And these are the things we're not measuring in healthcare at all, like being able to play with my grandchildren, have privacy, not be a burden to my family. The other goals that people express are sometimes goals for their caregivers, so like to help my caregiver be less stressed, or goals about who's caring for them, choose who helps me bathe and dress. And then they express care preferences, things, and this was actually kind of when we talk to people about goals, we don't think about this as a goal, but people would say, I really just want to get my doctors to talk to each other. 
That's my goal. Or I want to be heard by my doctor. I want to avoid dialysis, take fewer medications. So when we see this kind of this um, variation in what people say is most matters most to them, we don't want to create a quality measure for each one of these things because <coughs> this goal of you know staying out of the hospital may not be the same for everybody. People, some people may say, no, I want to be going to the hospital. Mm -hmm. So the important thing that we came out of this with is that when we measure quality of care, it needs to be individualized. So this is how we came up with this concept of person-driven outcomes. And the idea is that it's an outcome that's identified by the individual or their caregiver in some cases that is important to them, that's used for both care planning, but can also be used to evaluate quality of care. So instead of saying, did you help everyone achieve, you know, a lower PHQ-9 score, which is, you know, for depression, we're saying, did you help people achieve what they say mattered most to them? Mm -hmm. And we're trying to measure that in a statistically reliable and valid way to actually say are people achieving those goals. So the process that we use for this is pretty, should be, it's not exactly rocket science, but we're looking basically, we start with a discussion to talk to people about what is most important to them. And then this is the piece we're going to be spending most of today on, which is identifying and measuring a person-driven outcome. And we have two different ways to so say, based off of what someone says matters most to them, how are we going to measure whether or not you're achieving that goal? We're going to talk about two different ways. One is using person-reported outcome measures, and one is goal attainment scaling. Then there's some type of action step, a care plan, service plan, treatment plan. And then this is the most important piece, is coming back and reassessing that measurable person-driven outcome and saying, how are you doing? Do we need to revise this? Do we need to revise the plan? Do we need to change something? This is the piece where we generally see lots of people are really good at doing this first step. It's the coming back and reassessing and then doing something different based off of that reassessment. That's where we see a lot of problems. And then hopefully what we're going to see is that people are either improving or maintaining. That someone's goal is to just maintain their current state. <coughs> so we actually piloted this. Um, this was our previous two years. Um, was piloting this with um, seven different organizations uh, and the pilot was really focused on can we even is this a feasible thing to do like can this even work in practice and so you can see the organizations here it was a mix of some home-based primary care some um, health plan case management the common theme was that they were all caring for some type of complex population there were about 25 providers in total and it was a mix um, of different provider types um, and we had about 184 patients. And the, the real difference here was that the providers that were engaged in this were kind of saying, I'm going to do this with my these five patients that I think this is going to work best with to try to just figure out how to make it work. Mm -hmm. For this project, we're now in a demonstration phase. And so we want to see if this became part of a regular workflow, how well would it work? How many people would you actually do this with? So the overall um, findings was that it was feasible. I think one of the things that we really wanted to come out of that project with was particularly from the, both the providers and the patients. They said that actually engaging in this process of setting these measurable goals improved the way that they were delivering care. They found it was valuable to their experience, that people were actually remembering their goals that they were being set, that they were putting them above in their refrigerator and coming back and saying, oh, I've, I've actually achieved it. And patients were really feeling like, I feel like this was really asking me about what I wanted to achieve. Um, it does add time, though. Um, and so that is one of the things that we're trying to say is the time in our demonstration is the added time going to be offset by the potential value. Um, we saw from our interviews that it, it increased patient activation, so that's one of the things that we actually want to measure in our demonstration is can we see a measurable increase in patient activation. Um, and I think another thing is that providers, a lot of the providers we talked to said this fits really well within what we do. Like this is what I do, this is why I became a social worker or a nurse was to help people with the things that mattered most to them and so this is really good because I've been doing all these things that I think are helpful for patients, but it's not impacting their hemoglobin A1C. And so I'm not, you know, it's not looking like I'm doing as good a job as I think I am because I'm helping people. 
So here's just a, a little bit of, you know, kind of our results about what we saw um, from these seven sites. So, like I said, we had two different methods we looked at. So one was goal attainment scaling, and one was using PROMS. Um, and this kind of says, the first one here is the quality measures that we're looking at is first just engagement in this process. So did you set a goal and follow up on that goal? Um, and on average, about 78% of patients um, had a, both a baseline and a follow-up. And then meeting the goal was another one we looked at, and about 73% of patients met their goal. So in our demonstration, like I said, we're once again assessing the feasibility of this. So this is the demonstration phase we're in now. We really want to know, it does this work as part of a regular workflow? And we're going to assess the reliability, validity, and usability of the measures that come out of it. So let me talk about that. So we have four sites. You guys are one. Um, we're, your partner sites here are Kaiser Permanente Northwest in Portland. Um, is, um, they're doing this out of their complex care management out of their patient-centered medical home. Um, Community Health Plan of Washington actually has their health plan, but they're operationalizing this in a... Um, one is a, two of the sites are federally qualified community health centers, um, and the other one is um, an area agency on aging. So they're dealing primarily with a Medicaid population, um, not necessarily an older adult population in this one. And then Priority Health is a health plan out of Grand Rapids, um, and they are um, doing this in a health plan care management program that focuses on um, uh, care management across transitions of care um, and other types of short-term care management. So each organization, generally the average is about eight providers per organization. We have different numbers, but it's going to be about eight. Um, the idea is that they are going to enroll people in this. They're going to make this part of their everyday workflow for 12 months. So that's six months of as you see patients, starting them out and then following those patients for six months. And later in the day, we'll talk about the actual, like how would that actually work here? Like which patients are we talking about? Mm -hmm. We're gonna have a comparison group. So for you guys, there's another pod. Um, their patients mm -hmm. are gonna be the comparison group that we'll be using to compare. Um, and so total, there'll be 32 providers and 1,600 patients is about what we're aiming for. Um, so here you can see the main outcomes that we're looking at coming out of this are um, the first two are process measures, basically saying how well did you engage in this process. So did you set the percentage of individuals with a goal and a plan of care, the percent of individuals then with a follow-up goal, so that actually went to follow-up, and then finally the percent of individuals who achieve a goal. And the outcomes that we're looking at are patient activation, patient reported well-being, patient reported shared decision making, um, patient reported experience of care, caregiver reported strain, and then hospitalization, emergency department use, and skilled nursing facilities. Yes? What is patient activation? Yeah. And act like um, engagement? Yeah, so it's generally about overall, it's sometimes called self-efficacy. Um, it's about overall confidence in your ability to manage your own health and mm -hmm. healthcare situation. Um, it's um, something that has been in a lot of research linked to people actually improving a lot of their self-care for their chronic conditions if they are more activated because they feel more confident in their ability to do that. Got it. Thanks. Mm -hmm. All right. So that was our kind of high-level overview of what we're aiming for. Are there any questions about why we're doing this or what we're aiming to do? Not yet. Okay. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass this over to Shauna, and she's going to talk about goal setting, and then we're going to have you actually use your iPads to do some goal setting.